Hi hey everyone, let's work on number seven from applications involving right triangles. This one has two parts. So we're talking about a balloon that's uh, been sighted from two points on level ground. So from point A, we know the angle of elevation is 18 degrees and from point B, the angle of elevation is 12 degrees. Okay, so actually in both parts, we're going to say that points A and B are 80.4 meters apart. And then where they differ is that in part A, the two sightings are on the same side of the balloon. And I'm actually going to be even more specific. They're in a straight line uh, from the balloon on the same side. So A, if we're looking at balloon, okay, so here's my balloon. And we have ground level, and we have two points in a straight line on the same side of the balloon. And from one of the points, we look up and see the balloon and get a certain angle of elevation. And from the other point, we get a different angle of elevation. And we're interested in figuring out how high the balloon is. We know that the distance between the two points is 80.4. And then we should be able to place these two angles. The 12 degree angle is going to be the smaller one. So that's out here, which means that one is point B. And the 18 degree angle is in here at point A. So not true scale here. That looks a little big for an 18 degree angle, but uh, the right idea. OK, so. What we have going on here, again, is we have one side length. And it's a side length for this little skinny wedge of a triangle. We also have one angle. But that triangle is trouble for a couple of reasons. One is it doesn't contain side H at all. The other is it's not a right triangle. So for now, that triangle is unhelpful. When we hit law of sines, law of cosines, and we can start working on oblique triangles, that one might become a little bit more helpful. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to focus on the two different triangles that I see. So one of them is going to be the big outer triangle. So that's this guy right here. And I'm going to say, OK, there's that one. And that does involve my 12 degree angle and my side length h. However, I don't have any other known sides. So my trig functions always pair two sides, and we want that to be a known side and an unknown side. And I'm kind of out of luck here. So let's look at the other triangle. It's this little bit smaller one that includes the 18 degree angle. And it also includes side H. But once again, I don't have another known side. In fact, in some ways, I feel like I'm a little worse off because I at least knew part of this side length for the wider triangle. OK, so here's where uh, until we have law of sines, law of cosines, we just need to take a step back. And what we do is we pick out the piece of information that would be most helpful. And right now, that piece of information is this length right here. If I knew that, I would be able to solve this easily. So I'm just going to go about this as if I do know x. I'm going to say, uh, let's start with the 18, because that's actually a little simpler that tangent of 18 degrees is equal to h over x. And I'm also going to say that tangent of 12 degrees is equal to h over 80.4 plus x. So what I've just done is built a system of equations, two equations and two variables. So I should be able to solve that. Um, I would do this with substitution. So I would say, let's just take the first one. It's really easy. Let's solve for h. You can solve for whichever side you want, but h looks the easiest here. So h has to be the same as x times tangent of 18 degrees, which means in equation number two, we can substitute and we get the tangent of 12 degrees is equal to x times the tangent of 18 degrees over 80.4 plus x. 
And there is a single equation with only one variable that I can definitely work on solving. It is a little messy, but you want to remember that that tangent of 12 degrees and tangent of 18 degrees are just numbers. I haven't crunched through. I don't want to switch to an approximate now. I want that to be the last step when you're solving. But I can work on this without calculating those. So I'm going to clear fractions first. So I'll get tangent of 12 degrees multiplied by 80.4 plus x is equal to x times tangent of 18 degrees, 80.4. Okay, so I like this because now my x's aren't stuck in a fraction, but I made a little bit of new mess by multiplying. This x is now stuck in the parentheses. So to get rid of the parentheses, you really have two choices. You could divide or you could distribute. And here I actually think it's kind of a wash. I generally avoid dividing because then it makes fractions, but it doesn't make a terrible mess here. I'm going to show you the distribute just in case you're working on one where it does make a bigger mess. So we're going to multiply the 80.4 by the tangent of 12 degrees, and we're going to multiply the x by the tangent of 12 degrees, and that equals x tangent 18 degrees. Okay, we're actually pretty close. x is no longer stuck in fractions, in parentheses. I can move it around as I please. I'm going to go ahead and do that by moving them both to the same side. So I'll leave the 80.4 tangent 12 degrees where it is, but I am going to subtract the tangent 12 degrees from both sides, which will give me on the right x tangent 18 degrees minus x tangent 12 degrees. Okay, so this is getting pretty good. I've got my x's on one side. My problem right now is that there are still two x's in this equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor x out I'm not doing anything to the left hand side in this step. And then last step is to divide by all of that. So it ends up being x is equal to 80.4 tangent 12 degrees divided by tangent 18 degrees minus tangent 12 degrees. Okay, so kind of a mess. And it continues to be a little bit of a mess as I plug it into my calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in some parentheses. I don't actually know that I need them for the top, but since this is so messy, I'm just gonna be really careful. Okay, so there's the top of my fraction. I definitely need parentheses for the bottom. If I don't include parentheses around the bottom, it will divide by tangent 18, and then it will assume the minus tangent 12 is not part of the fraction at all. Okay, so I get that x is approximately 152.09, uh, what were our units in this one? Meters, this was 80.4 meters. Okay, so this length on the triangle is uh, 152.09 meters. If you remember after all this, what we really wanted to know was what is h? But it's fine that we ended up with x because we have a fairly simple formula right here that will give us h. So to find our h, last step, we'll say h is that 152.09 multiplied by tangent of 18 degrees, which means h is approximately uh, multiplied by tangent of 18 49.42 meters, so just shy of 50 meters high. All right, I'm going to do B in a separate video. It's similar, so if you're feeling pretty good about this one, that's one that you could uh, try on your own and then just check in the video, make sure you got it right. So thanks for watching this one.